Hello and a warm welcome from Frankfurt. My name is Kai Ebeling and I'm the latest member who joined Hilabas DCM team. I'm responsible for the coverage of Spanish banks and Spanish SSAs. And next to me is Sabrina Mies. Sabrina Mies is our covered bond analyst. Hi Sabrina. Hi Kai, good to see you. Good to see you. And today we want to have a look at the Spanish covered bond law and the implementation of the European directive to harmonize the European covered bond laws. We already published some videos on that and today we want to continue our series to focus on the changes at the Spanish covered bond law. So Sabrina, tell us what changed in the, at the Spanish covered bond law? But let's first have a look at um, the various covered bond types in Spain. Um, most of you might remember um, there are quite a few. We have the cedulas, hipotecarias, uh, so covered bonds backed by mortgage loans, cedulas territoriales, covered bonds backed by public sector loans, and the cedulas de internacionalización, um, covered bonds backed by export finance loans. And then there is another group of um, covered bonds that are called bonos. What is the difference between the two groups? Um, uh, at the moment, cedulas um, are backed by lo loans um, of all that loan type in the, on the balance sheet of the bank, while with the bonus, there is a dedicated cover pool that is backing um, that type of covered bonds. Now, what has or what is going to change from uh, July t July 2022 onwards? So not long, actually, uh, not too long to wait for. One law, the Real, de Real Decreto, is going to replace um, all the laws that are currently govern governing the several types of covered bonds. Uh, sorry, Sabrina, just to interrupt you shortly, but the cedulas hypothecarias, these are the most important um, types of covered bonds, or because um, of course I know that there are some different types types of covered bonds like the Territoriales, but in fact in practice they don't um, have such a huge importance anymore. You are absolutely right, okay, nothing okay. to add here actually. Um, so yes, uh, as I said, um, there is only one law replacing, uh, coming forward and replacing the, uh, the former laws. Um, which makes it easier, more transparent, I think, for investors and, and analysts. On top, there are a lot of other substantial structural changes in, in Spain or to the Spanish covered bond law. We will show you a few on the next slide. Maybe up front, the cedulas, as I said, um, are going to change in that term that there will be also only a ded dedicated cover pool backing those type of covered bonds. The difference be the two, between the two in future actually is the cover pool for the cedulas is open, so the issuer can add further cover assets afterwards, after the issuance of covered bonds. For the bonus, it's closed. There is one cover pool which, which won't change um, and cannot be, uh, no more assets can be added to that pool after, after the issuance. Um, the Spanish law is introducing an internal or, or is introducing a cover pool monitor and the issuer has the option um, to choose uh, if that will be an internal or external cover pool monitor and um, on top of that the Spanish law is introducing a cover pool, a special administrator, cover pool administrator here for um, in case of insolvency of the bank or in case of resolution. Okay, thanks. So maybe to bring everything in the right order, let's come back at first to the different type of covered bonds and the eligible asset. Did anything or will anything change there? Nothing is going to change. The covered bond types will uh, will remain as I as just presented, and so will the um, assets. So we have our t typical classical asset types here, and um, as you just probably saw in Spain, we have that third um, uh, covered bond type, the, the internas cedulas de internacionalización, which are backed by export finance loans. So I put them down here. Specifically, although in um, other countries such as France and Germany um, we have them as well, but not separately and not separately um, and they are not separately covered bonds issued against because here and that's the little star on the side here uh, showing they are actually part of the public sector cover pool assets and backing public sector covered bonds. So, yeah, so there, this is the traditional group of assets that will uh, remain and premium means um, they will fall under the cover European covered bond premium asset classes um, and the covered bonds will be privileged um, uh, in terms of um, regulatory treatment. Spain is also um, adding a f two more asset types which are um, optional um, to be added by the European covered bond directive 
Um, so we will see if they will fill, will be filled with life after July 2022. Um, this has not been introduced by France and explicitly, explicitly not introduced by Germany, although the aircraft um, fund brief for covered bonds in Germany and the asset types backing them, uh, I would say, fall under this uh, type of generic high quality assets and under the under the category non-premium, not non-privileged. Um. So when you mention aircraft uh, mortgage loan and air aircraft um, fund briefe, this is for me always connected with the German covered bond law. And when I have a look at Spain, it's always a high over collateralization ratio. This is always the first thing I think about when I when I when I think about um, Spanish covers. So what will happen to the high OC ratio? Will this remain or are there also changes to come? Well, we have to distinguish between the minimum over collateralization by law and the voluntarily provided over collateralization. Uh, sure. You're right. The voluntary co provide over collateralization is very high or well, it, it's not voluntary because, as we said, it's the whole loan book that is uh, collateralizing um, the cedulas. So there is, by nature, a very high over collateralization mm -hmm. of 100 percent, even 400 percent, depending on the issuers. And then we have the minimum over collateralization ratio by law, which is at the moment 25 percent for mortgage covered bonds in Spain and 43 percent for the public sector covered bonds. This will be reduced according to the European Covered Bond Directive to 5 percent uh, nominal on a nominal basis. Um, same has been chosen or is, is, is in France um, and um, Germany has the 2 percent um, net present value um, as well as 2 percent nominal for mortgage and public sector covered bonds. And now coming back to your question on the over collateralization and if that will be reduced by the issuers, I think there is one important element that needs to be considered and that is the over collateralization commensurate with the rating level that is okay. calculated by the rating agencies which is typically higher than the minimum over collateralization ratio of 5%. Mm -hmm. So issuers um, won't likely reduce the uh, OC ratio to 5%, but will keep a certain, the certain level or that level that is needed for the, for the rating. And actually, um, it's probably very interesting to know that the Spanish law is allowing the issuer to opt for a higher over collateralization ratio than the minimum um, OC required by law, but then they have to um, publish this in the um, terms and conditions um, so that it, this is very transparent that, that there is a committed o OC level of a certain of a certain ratio. Okay, that's that's very interesting, and I think one of the most important facts that investors would like to know because this is the one safety feature. The other safety feature of covered bonds is the liquidity in the cover pool if it comes to market disruptions. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of um, countries who introduce a liquidity buffer. Will f Spain do the same? Yes, Spain is following the um, EU covered bond directive who is asking the national laws to introduce the liquidity okay. buffer of 180 days. Um, uh, just to remind you here, the issuers have to calculate the um, principal and interest coming from the underlying cover assets and are deduct deducting the principal and interest outflows of the under the covered bonds. And then the resulting liquidity gap needs to be covered by liquid assets and that's the liquidity buffer. Um, now, um, at the moment, Spain has only hard bullets, meaning the, the promised initial uh, maturity date of, of the covered bonds. Um, as long as um, they are in place when calculating li the liquidity puffer, this refers to that maturity date. If um, the issuers are going to choose to issue soft bullets, um, so covered bonds with an extended maturity date, um, the Spanish law allows to consider that extended maturity date in the, in the calculation of the liquidity buffer, which will end up in a lower um, liquidity buffer than if considering the initial maturity date. This has also been chosen, chosen by the French uh, law, um, whereas the German chose to keep the initial maturity date. Okay, so this means in fact that Spain, one of the last um, hard bullet countries, will introduce soft bullet structures as well, right? Well, they, the issuers are allowed to introduce. It's not introduced by law as it's um, in Germany, but as in okay. France, the issuers have the option to issue soft bullets. 
as I said at the moment, and you, as, as you said, everything is uh, issued uh, in a hard bullet format. And from July onwards, this can mm -hmm. be changed by the issuers. Um, now, what is very important and uh, is that the national laws are asking for very objective triggers um, so that uh, there is not a discretion of the issuer to uh, extend maturities because we are here talking about the, uh, the worst case scenario. And Spain chose, as, um, chose very strict objective triggers, uh, insolvency resolution or um, a failure to pay or the risk to fail the payment, for example, when breaching the liquidity buffer. They also have a fourth um, trigger event, which is the serious disruption of financial markets, um, which is um, which is um, has to be has to be announced by the macroprudential financial stability board. So again, uh, there is a third party here uh, um, involved. And what I think is very strong in the Spanish uh, legal framework is that for all the trigger events, um, the regulator, the Bank of Spain, has to ex approve the extension upon request by the issuer or special administrator. OK, that means there's a third party, an independent third party, who will be introduced in the process, uh, involved in the process. That's correct. And, and in all the four um, circumstances, whereby in, in France um, we have um, sole trigger events, insolvency and resolution, and only with the trigger event liquidity, um, there is a re approval by the regulator needed. In S Germany, this is a completely different story. Um, we rely on the uh, special administrator data uh, and meeting certain conditions and mm -hmm. having the um, the right to postpone um, maturities. In all three countries, um, but in terms of maximum extension period, um, there we have some differences. While uh, in the German law, the 12 months period is specified. This is not yet specified in France and uh, Spain, well, because probably it's an option of the issuer to choose this um, structural element mm -hmm. and then the issuer has to determine the extension period and, and, and publish that in the, in the terms and conditions. Ah, okay, thanks. thanks for the explanation. Um, yes, and maybe um, just uh, looking at this nice map coming from Moody's, which is still, um, or which is again showing that third parties are very often involved when it comes to maturity extension and the colors are showing different, um, uh, different situations. Or, um, so for example, uh, Germany and Austria, um, here we have the cover pool administrator having a, a very um, big role whereby in France, as I said, the regulator um, is involved with it when it comes to a liquidity breach. And in Spain, another different color because as we just saw, the regulator is involved in all the trigger events. Um, so that's just to explain this nice map. So Sabrina, many, many thanks for your explanations. I think our clients learned a lot today yeah, in this very I short so. time. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, now our little series about the implementation of the EU directive to harmonize the European covered bond laws comes now to an end. But if you are interested to watch um, the other videos, Sabrina uploaded all the videos on YouTube. So you can have a look about the implementation in France or Germany or Austria. And of course, we also published some research papers on that. But if you have any questions left, always feel free to contact Sabrina and her team or our DCM team and we will forward these questions then to Sabrina. So for now I wish you all the best and I hope to see you soon again in person. Best regards from Frankfurt and bye bye. Total